Nicholas I died while the Crimean War raged, and his son Alexander II took office in 1855. Alexander immediately faced problems from a defeated army and poor finances. Rather than cracking down on his opponents, Alexander began serious reforms. In 1861, he emancipated the serfs and allowed them to gain land from the nobility. However, they did not own it privately. Instead, their villages practiced a communal system. For urban dwellers, new political and judicial rights, including trial by jury, were introduced. Alexander tried to reform the economy by developing close ties with the French. French investors helped in building railroads, connecting Moscow with its vast empire. Russian wheat was sold to Western European capitals. The Trans-Siberian Railroad was not completed during this period, but some sections from Moscow to southern Russia were constructed. Alexander II did not go full throttle with liberal reforms and instead kept tight controls on government censorship. Anarchists assassinated Alexander II and his son Alexander III gained power in 1881. The Ottoman Empire was also a weak empire. Selim III in 1789 to 1807 was losing territory from the advancing Russians and Austrians in southeastern Europe. The Janissaries had become corrupt and wintering in Istanbul rather than staying on the front lines. Selim starts a reform movement to create a modern European army based on Napoleonic principles, the nizim e jadid or the New Order. Selim used urban Muslims for the new army, but the Janissaries revolted and imprisoned Selim. The Janissaries kill off the males of the Ottomans except for Mahmud II. Mahmud quietly built up a strong palace guard and destroyed the Janissaries in 1826, known as the Auspicious Event. Mahmud then began Western reforms to develop schools for the military, modern medicine, and technical skills. Secondary schools were built for students after completing primary education in the madrasas. Science, engineering, and foreign languages were focused upon rather than religion. Unfortunately, the empire was too vast and he would not institute the same reforms as in Egypt. A wealthy aristocracy still existed, although they were taxed higher. In 1829, nationalism, discussed previously, caused the Ottomans to continue losing power in Europe. The European powers backed the Greeks for independent. However, 50% of the Greeks lived throughout the Ottoman Empire along the coast of Asia Minor and the Black Sea. Previously, Greeks and Armenians were respected within the empire. Now they are thought as treasonous, possibly a fifth column. Mahmud was more successful at diplomacy, pitting the European powers against each other. The French had backed Egypt, so a treaty was signed with the Russians in 1833, to preserve the integrity of the Ottomans. The Hunkar Iklazizi Treaty also allowed the Russian Navy to sail through the Bosporus to the Mediterranean. Many were shocked since the Russians had fought four wars against the Ottomans in recent decades. The British feared Russian naval growth and signed a commercial treaty in 1838 reducing tariffs on British goods. The Ottoman manufacturers could not compete against British industry and many sites closed. Mahmud dies and his young son takes over, Abdul Majid. However, Mahmud's foreign minister, Mustafa Rashid, is the real power and begins Tanzimat or reorganization. He issues the noble script of the Rose Chamber, which created basic rights for the masses, fair taxes, and conscription for a modern army. Cronyism would end. Governors were given greater control over their areas. Railways were begun to better transportation and communication. Unfortunately, he does not have much success against the aristocracy, and true reform never begins until after World War I. The Ottomans would continue their decline. During the Crimean War, the Russians wanted to control the Balkans and take the capital, Istanbul. The British and French assist the Ottomans, but they are forced to sign the imperial rescript. All Ottoman citizens are treated equally. Jews and Christians do not have to pay higher taxes. This angers Muslims and shows Ottoman weakness against the great powers.